Boujou, Tansegia. Hey, how are you? It's a smudge for your thoughts. With Kahisas. <laughs> and her. Can you so. not do that? <laughs> okay. And Zosha. Oh, so today we talked with Alex Starblanket. Um, he is the owner of Star Blanket um, Clothing. Um, and we also talked to Mike Scott along with him, who is the owner of Sober is Sexy. He's also a motivational speaker. Um, Alex is going through dialysis, um, kidney failure. Um, and he just, they both, we talked, had a really fun conversation about staying positive, keeping your strength and, um, and being respectful in your, in, uh, approaching like getting reconnected with your culture and kind of a lot of stuff um so it's a really great conversation um really lively conversation um and inspiring so go ahead and listen Mm -hmm. So let's get started. Yeah. So welcome, Alex and Mike, to A Smudge for Your Thoughts. Thank um, you. <laughs> so can you guys introduce yourselves? Um, my name is Alex Starblanket. Uh, I'm from Atakaku First Nation. Um, I'm 37 years old. I was diagnosed with kidney failure in 2017, and I have started my own logo to help our people so they don't go through the same thing process that I'm going through. And uh, so, yeah, I kind of just help our generation kind of like a healthier life. Nice. Right. Uh, my name is Mike Scott. I am from Sturgeon Lake First Nation. I am born and raised in Saskatoon, Saskatchewan, where I currently reside. Um, I traveled across Canada and parts of the United States as a motivational speaker. I too also started a clothing brand uh, called Sober is Sexy. And later on down the road, I started another brand with my brother called Ogimao, which means uh, leader in Cree. So we're just out here in this part of the, the continent and just providing um, awareness about sobriety, the lifestyle that comes with those types of things, and, you know, just promoting a healthier life and, and way for people to follow. I love that. That's awesome. Thank you for introducing yourselves. Yeah. Um, um, so what tribe are you guys a part of? Cree. Cree, Cree. Cree yeah. Both Plains Cree. Cree. Plains Cree. Uh, Plains Cree. Plains Cree. Uh, there's, there's, yeah, there's more than one yeah. one uh, type of Cree over here. We yeah. have like Bush Cree, Plains Cree, Swampy Cree. Yeah, yeah. Crazy um, Cree. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, yeah, no, I, I already knew that, uh, uh, I don't think you guys actually said that, uh, but, um, the, I mean, we're the, we're the southernmost Cree, uh, from, uh, Rocky Boy, Montana. Uh, so yeah, there are, uh, lots of Crees. We're, uh, different dialect than the Plains Cree, but we are Plains Cree as well. Um, <laughs> so, uh, what, uh, so you guys touched on a little bit, but, uh, what do you guys do for a living? Uh, what is your passions, your hobbies? Um, my life is basically, uh, my second life is on the machine that keeps me alive, right? And uh, I go three to four times a week. And when I get my days off, I usually come to the office and uh, just work on my uh, merchandise or stuff like that and uh, reach out, try and support other people, other small businesses. Uh, my main goal is to try to get to our, gener- our younger generation and show them that uh, there is hope after like, like dialysis and you know, that, that there's other things that we can do to keep strong. And it's not all about just going to the machine and sit there for four hours and then, you know, go back home and go to bed. And like, um, I'm, I'm trying to show that the youth that, that we're strong, we're stronger than who we are, you know, and we can do other things beyond our mind, what we can do. And just trying to, build a healthier generation for, you know, so they don't, they don't go down the same path that I went through. And, you know, just, that's my passion is just to try to help our generation live a healthier life. 
nice. I like how uh, you are trying to show people that, like, that are already going through dialysis, maybe that, like, you're not, you don't have to be limited. Yeah, uh, like, yeah. Your life doesn't have to be limited. Like, you. Can I've be- noticed since I've started dialysis that a lot of them just give up right they just yeah gave up. you feel like you're and, oh, um, connected to this machine yeah i have a buddy that's uh, on dialysis and um i asked him i said how come you don't go work out like get on the transplant list he goes like oh i can't do it that's you know i'm just like damn oh, man. <clears throat> and, are you on a transplant list um actually no <laughs> oh, okay okay i got a few uh tests that i have to do like uh what I do is uh, some shots. Anyways, I got to go do some shots. Oh, okay. Yeah. Okay. But um, one of them was I had to lose a lot of weight days, so that's what I did. Oh, okay. <clears throat> there you go. Yeah. Oh, because they probably are, like, under the idea of, like, if you are a certain weight, then... Oh, definitely, There's, yeah. like, not a... They're like, oh, there's no point to like giving you a new kidney or something like that. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Like, what's the, yeah, it's like, a, even though even it's a, kind of a biased way, like people, whatever. But anyway, yeah. That's, yeah. Yeah. So I really don't know uh, too much what, what, what exactly is dialysis and what's the process. Uh, it's where your kidneys uh, fail. And your kidneys is what produces your urine and your uh, vitamins and all that mineral stuff, right? And, that's what the machine does now for me is uh, takes away like access fluid. So it back. like works as your kidney kind of. Exactly. Yeah. Oh, it, okay. And like, okay. Yeah. It cleans my body system and everything like that. Gotcha. So that's why you have to go mm-hmm. so much because it, if you didn't it, it yeah. would be like not having a kidney. <laughs> yeah. It, okay. Ouch, man. Yeah. Gotcha. Oh. Gotcha. All right. So, um, oh, so Mike, you can, you should, Talk about your your passions and hobbies and what you do for a living and everything, even though you already kind of touched on it. Okay. Um, Passion wise, I've been kind of lost with that lately. I think like COVID-19 really changed the way that the course of my life was going. I was so used to working and, Mm -hmm. you know, being, having a really positive mindset all the time. And then going from that to being basically trapped at home and not being able to do what I normally do for work, which is, uh, public speaking Mm -hmm. so it's it's really affected me in a negative way I think and I'm still kind of stuck in that strut where I need to figure out what I'm passionate about now because it it really opened up my eyes and I'm looking at the world very differently than I did as opposed to a year ago so passion wise I would still say you know I I love to help people in any way I can and I feel like using my voice is, is a strong way to encourage other people to find their light so I still use social media as a, as a way of introducing that, that light. Um, I also do public speaking. I'm working on a book right now that's supposed to be published. It takes a long time though. The process is like oh, two bet. years, I think they said. Wow. Um, I'm going back to school in a week. So I'm a full-time university student, I'm majoring in indigenous studies and minoring in business cool. and clothing you know, selling, selling items and stuff like that. I think nice. opening an online store would really help. Nice. Since everybody is like this. Uh, yep. Yeah. Attached yeah. to the phone. phone. That's me. <laughs> That's me. <laughs> That's yeah. a lot of people, you especially guys, during COVID. Uh, I guess that brings it up. Uh, what is, uh, how could people find you guys on uh, your Smoke you website? Me. <laughs> <laughs> you guys currently have a website? Uh, um, I'm working on one. I have a mentor. I got a mentor through uh this uh, fashion show that I was doing with uh, my clothing line mm-hmm. and um, he was just waiting for me to uh, actually pay him up and uh, okay. get it going. And, but as of now I'm using Facebook. So okay. I use uh, Facebook and it's just Alex stars. Okay. So we like people go, can uh, go to your Alex stars, Facebook yeah. to purchase. Okay, cool. Good to yeah. Know. And I just throw all my merch on the, on Facebook there. And so everyone knows it's uh, stars with a Z. Yeah. So cool. And then what about your merchandise, Mike? Mm, I don't have any right now. I'm oh, just okay. kind of focusing on building the inventory first. Gotcha. 
Okay. Um, I did have a website, but it's taken down for now because I need to revamp it and make mm-hmm. it look pristine. Okay, um, nice. Everybody can just find me on Facebook or uh, other social media under Mike Scott. Cool. I only have like two things. All okay, right. okay. Um, we looking out. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, so one thing, uh, if you guys uh, want to go like a cheaper a route that's like uh really cost effective and it works uh for the uh, short run anyways until you everything starts picking up uh is how we started our website is we went to the google the uh, google we went to the google <laughs> uh, we bought uh google uh, domains and we just bought a uh uh the domain a smudge for your uh for 15 bucks for the year and then through their service uh, they allow you to create your website oh, yeah, and yeah, uh, for free. So it's they they host everything uh, right there. So f- for fifteen bucks, we got a website and you could uh, hmm. edit it, uh, have everything on there, yeah. uh, have links. Yeah, that's to pretty wherever. good. Yeah. So if you if you are selling on uh, like a- uh, Amazon, uh, their services or Etsy or um, pretty much a, a Facebook Marketplace. Um, if you're selling on any of those platforms, put them on your website uh, and links right there. And then you, you're building your platform that way too. It's super cheap Word. and effective. Yeah. So uh, that's just one way. To that use. is pretty cheap. Yeah. Yeah. There's people who charge like thousands of dollars just I to get know. a website yeah. going. Yeah. yeah. I know. Yes. A lot of people don't know that kind of stuff. I mean. Yeah. Uh, Keith just found it out. I don't know. How, yeah. But. Uh, my, I mean, I was using for whenever I was working for my tribe. Oh yeah. Uh, we went to uh some uh some artists and they were charging thousands of dollars to to uh to do it on Adobe suites and everything. I mean yeah you can do it that way. You could write the code and everything, but whenever there's already a platform for it and it's super cheap, why not just go this way? I yeah. mean save yeah. a bunch of money. Uh and once it starts picking up and you start making a bunch of money then go to the more expensive route. You yeah. have a couple of G's that won't yeah. really <laughs> Yeah, exactly. So Me, like, I mean, feel like that much when you <laughs> make money. Yeah, but that's just a, a little food for thought, I guess. Mm-hmm. A smudge Thanks. for your thought. <laughs> 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 uh, so uh, cool. Well, I'm glad to like be learning about you guys and what mm-hmm. you do because I, I really like the idea of. I just love um, spreading positivity and like spreading strength and like being a good example and role model for others. So I really appreciate the work that you guys are doing. Um, so what inspires you to do what you guys do? Inspires you, Alex. Dig uh, deep. The youth. <laughs> the, youth. Okay. The, the youth, they have like so much hidden talent. Mm-hmm. And they don't realize that talent until it's too late. Mm-hmm. So I kind of like want to get that like sh- able to, for them to realize their talent before it's too late, and then <clears throat> give them that po- opportunity to shine. Right, <clears throat> I like that because yeah, like like <clears throat> I, I I feel like there's so much I could have done when I was younger. Like when you're older, like you you know you you look back and you're like okay, like if I would have had retrospect, yes. but now you can show other people you know learn from what you've been through yeah yeah what was the question again (laughs) 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 i just like zoned out for a second (laughs) what inspires you to do motivational speaking and sober you know uh have your business sober is sexy and everything um there's so many different types of inspirations i don't know it's hard to say like there's just one thing Because for me, it's like, it's everything around me. Mm-hmm. The environment that I still live in right now is filled with, there's a lot of negativity around us. I'm pretty sure Alex still lives in the hood too, but I'm, I'm right here. And every day you hear the sirens, you know, and he speaks mm-hmm. about the youth and a lot of the murders that have happened in our city in the last 10 years, they're all kids under the age of 18 that are killing each other or killing older people. Mm-hmm. So when you say, you know, speak about, them finding their light it's hard for them to find that light when they're surrounded by so much darkness all the time Mm -hmm. so just by shedding that light on these issues that we face we're helping open up those doors and helping 
turn on those light bulbs for them to figure it out themselves. Because one thing I learned is that we can never change anybody. Mm-hmm. We can help the tools. them. Yeah, we can help them change their opinion of their surroundings so that they can think differently, though, and they can create better solutions to those problems. I like that them. perspective of it. So yeah. you can't the inspiration yourself. is is hoping for a better change. That's that's what keeps me going, and that's what I strive for is to help people become the best version of themselves. That's good. That's a really good reason. Um, I totally agree with that. Yeah, when did uh, you start uh, doing your motivational speaking and uh, going around the country and uh, to start telling people about uh, this stuff? I started about six years ago. Um, I just volunteered my time as um, a facilitator, just kind of sitting in on groups such as this, but there would be like eight or 10 of us and we'd just be like, they got me with food. They're like, (laughs) pizza if you come. I was like, hell yeah, I'm hungry, I want some pizza. So I go sit in these groups and listen to them talk. And then through that, I was like, wow, this is actually pretty cool. You know, I've never talked about things like this before. Yeah. So it got me really intrigued. And then this guy gave me the opportunity. He's like, hey, do you want to come to Ottawa with us? And I was like, no, I'm scared of flying. Right? I never flew before. Okay. So he, he flew me to Ottawa with the rest of the group after we fundraised. And I got to go to this conference. And then this lady was there. And this person didn't show up for their facilitation. She was supposed to do I don't know more. Mm-hmm. It just popped off that year and people were like freaking out. And they looked at me. I had my two little braids down. They're like, hey, you're native. Can you do the I don't know more facilitation? I was oh like, I guess so. Yeah, okay. You just did it. So I go, That's yeah, awesome. I did it. I just I didn't really know much about it, but I spent that like hour teaching that group about I don't know more. And there was two ladies in there. And one of them asked me about six months later. She's like, hey, will you come and speak? And I was like, no. Like I would always, I would always say no, right. To these opportunities. I just uh-huh. feel like, no, no. Uh-huh. But eventually she talked me into it and I went and that was the very first time that I spoke and I realized the power behind the messages that I was sharing these people. Cause this is like the first time I'm, I'm sharing it with anybody. Mm-hmm. So it's emotional. It's, it's real. It's raw. And once I get it out of me and everybody's crying and we're hugging and we're laughing, they're like, thank you for, you know, sharing mm-hmm. what you went through. It opens up their wounds to a point where, they feel comfortable enough that they can share that with somebody else too. And that's where the healing begins is when we, we address, you know, those things that we've been through. So that's great. That's where the journey take took me. And now I'm like almost 600 communities across the continent that I've been to and spoken to thousands of people. It's awesome. It kind of started like you just kind of stumbled into it almost, but then you found, you just kind of went with it and leaned into that and found your passion that's really awesome. That's where that's where that important teaching comes from. If, if you don't know how to do something, just just start because yeah. eventually you're going to learn, man. The mm-hmm. first hundred mm-hmm. times I talked, I was like, I sucked. <laughs> you know, I like, <laughs> um, uh, like I just stuttering like the yeah. whole time. I didn't know what, what to share. But, but I'm sure people could like feel your authenticity and knew, you know, and it, yeah, you just, know, just, help their healing. Just be process. real. Just they be who real. you are. Yeah. yeah. Um, they say it takes a thousand hours to be professional at whatever there, it is yeah. that you're doing, you know, so you got to continuously grow and evolve and, and learn. How are you going to get there unless you just start doing it, right? Yeah. So. It's like, yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> nice. Um, Can you give us a little uh, teaser of uh, how you start your presentation? If you want to. If you, you want to. to. Yeah, it might be kind of like, 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 like how I like, talk? Yeah. Or like what you talk about. He's like getting out. <laughs> you want me to like pretend there's a crowd of people here? Yeah, yeah. That'd be well, I can't I can't really do it because I like, use yeah. a I use a PowerPoint. I started using a PowerPoint about halfway through. Uh-huh. And so it starts off, it's called Finding the Warrior Within. Right. Uh-huh. And it says it in the screen. And then I asked the crowd, I asked certain people, you know, like who here has ever felt like giving up before? Mm-hmm. At anything at work, at school, in a relationship, you know, like different topics and everybody will put their hand up and I ask him who here has ever felt like giving up on themselves and everybody will put up their hand because we've all been through moments Mm -hmm. in life where we just Mm -hmm. wanted to give up you know we Mm -hmm. didn't want to be here Mm -hmm. so I explained to them you know that there's a spark that happened that was created the moment that you were given that gift of life you know and it's it's been factual that it literally happens when the sperm and the egg connect there's a Mm -hmm. spark that happens 
and that spark it's like one out of one in a trillion that you are here that you're born on this planet you know so you're given that gift of life and no matter what happens throughout your life you're going to find that warrior that's going to continuously fight aga maiden will keep keep moving forward never give up on yourself and I tell them, that's what I'm going to bring out of you today. I'm going to bring that warrior and you're going to continue fighting this good way of life. And then boom, I like that. get into it. Nice. <laughs> you know, I get, get, get into like, I talk about it. Yeah. I started off like it doesn't just go from my life. I have to share before me. So okay. residential schools, my grandparents, True. my parents, and then me. Yeah. And then I share my story. Because it always starts like it's not, it didn't start with you. It started. Yeah. I like that. Like, yeah. Give the foundation of. They have to understand to why things are the way they are today yeah. for Indigenous people. Yeah, yeah. Because yeah. yeah. a lot of there's Sorry, a lot of ahead. ignorant people out there who don't understand, and they're you know they're very um, what's the word besides ignorant? <laughs> um, <laughs> they're very like blind to the fact yeah. that you know things are the, word you use. the way they are here in Canada for a reason. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. You know, and Indigenous people were placed way down here. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So you do um, the talks with um, non-Indigenous people too as well, that sounds like? Yeah, I do it with, you know, whoever brings Whoever's me out to their listening. community. I've spoken okay. to doctors, I've spoken to like groups of lawyers, I've spoken to awesome. principals and teachers and whole communities. I think mean, someone who's adults, someone who's adults probably didn't realize some of their past either, right? That they're, yeah. they needed that light to be, you know. Broken. There's people right. who come up yeah. to me afterwards and they're like, I didn't know that happened. Yeah. And I was like, yeah. how could you? It's been hidden for so long. Yeah. Mm -hmm. For the ones who do choose to learn about it, you know, you have to yeah. go the extra mile. Yeah. But what I really like about university now in Canada uh -huh. is it's a mandatory thing to learn about Indigenous peoples. <clears throat> yeah. So you have to good. take you have to take an Indigenous studies class. That is good. A few of them to to meet your requisites okay. to graduate. Yeah. That's so um how our our college was in montana i'm not i think it's in i'm not sure if it's required in all of the schools there but anyway yeah so i agree with that it's should be mandatory uh so all right so uh <laughs> i guess we, we can move on to our next question i guess um so uh how do you stay connected to your culture uh or what does it mean to you to be cree um I wasn't really connected to my culture when I was when I when I was growing up in Saskatchewan, but when I moved to BC, their culture was real strong out there, and uh, that's how I ended up finding my uh, my culture and then getting close to uh, our creator, and um, it brought me so close that I actually just started uh, uh, learning how to fancy dance, men's fancy dance. So I built my regalia. It took me about two years, and I'm still building it i still got to do some uh, moccasin work and um a few uh shields and i guess i'm done after that but it takes time i got to take uh, the effort to uh put my effort into it and uh yeah so do you still dance with it bef like even though it's not done yet or no uh, yeah yeah right? i put okay. it on just to just to like uh okay. to feel the weight and stuff and yeah. uh, now that i lost weight it's kind of like uh gained more weight so i lost okay. weight and it's, it's kind of like heavier now yeah, so i gotta, like, I gotta oh. put it on just to make sure i can still dance around, around in it and yeah. yeah some some mornings i'll just wake up and put my earphones on without the outfit and just <laughs> okay just get used to the um the weight yeah. on your head yeah so, that's yeah. good that's good uh, whenever we were talking to each other you were uh telling us how you <clears throat> Oh, got yeah. your regalia yeah uh, like put together could you expand a little <clears throat> talk um yeah, I started my regalia with a uh, ribbon, ribbon uh, shirt. I was going to say skirt. <laughs> and um, I was, that's where I, that's where I was just going to leave it. It was, I was going to just like uh, wear my ribbon shirt and uh, speak with it, eh? like uh, with groups and stuff. Mm -hmm. And uh, my uh, ex-girlfriend, she she recommended that I just start. I'm going to be sober for the rest of my life. I might as well just start dancing and yeah. uh, so I used uh, the ribbon shirt that was made for me was from a woman. She passed away due to uh, breast cancer. And uh, before she passed away, she was, she 
took the effort to build, to uh, make that uh, ribbon skirt, I mean skirt, ribbon <laughs> shirt for me. And uh, I was really happy that she t- took the time to do that, eh? Because I didn't know who to go to to make it for me. And it was like, it has like a, the, the star and here and here and a big one in the back, eh? And nice. it was probably, it's probably like worth $500, maybe more. And I just like surprised that it came in the mail and then I was happy for it and that's what gave me the motivation to just yeah. you know might as well this is this is where I'm going to start yeah. what's my next project and then I would move to my next project and just before I start doing it somebody else offers to do that for me and I'm just like can't refuse can't yeah. refuse to help so might as that's well so just beautiful. take it that's so beautiful all like and, the things that have come together like oh yeah man when I was uh yeah. when I got my bustles I entered this draw and it was out of thousands of people. And um, just before that draw, I had a dream. And that dream was uh, two or uh, yeah, two feathers were given to me. And uh, I didn't know what that dream meant, but my buddy, he's also into his culture. Eh? He goes, you're gonna receive a gift. And sure enough, out of that draw, I won those bustles. And oh these bustles God. came to me in the mail eh? and I'm like, wow. And, you know, some dreams I have like that, they come true, like but premonition. in a different meaning. Eh? So, yeah. And then that's how I end up receiving my bustles was through this elder. And I'm just like, wow. And same, like a lot of stuff was given to me through elder wise, uh, people that offer to help. And I guess that's where it all starts was people were helping me. Yeah. And, I wanted to do it myself, but like before I even started, it was already given to me. <laughs> it just keeps on like, yeah, you like have no chance to even do it yourself. Yes. But that like yeah. shows you like when you're on the right path in life, like, not, I mean, obviously not everything comes <clears throat> so easily, but like, you know, a lot of times when you're on the right path, like things just start coming in fruition or coming to yeah. fruition yeah. to help you along the way. Like, yeah. So, um, so we, we do have a, a lot of non-indigenous people who listen to our podcast. Um, can you describe what uh, uh, the fancy is? What fancy feather dance is? Um, uh, it's uh, I don't know how to explain it. Um, men's fancy is basically with uh, like a, it's like a bustle, and these bustles represent uh, our people pretty much. Like that's how I look at it. Is like. The way you treat your bustles, the feathers, is the way I treat my people. Mm-hmm. You know, you got to keep them firm. You got to keep them, you know, protected. And, you know, so <clears throat> when I, and then when we dance, we're actually dancing for healing for all the people, people that are going through hard times, people that are, you know, lost someone, people that are, you know, just stuff like that, you know, like, mm-hmm. and uh, when I dance, I'm actually dancing for the people on dialysis eh? and i'm trying to give them hope i'm trying to show them that that there's actually other stuff that you can do other than just mm-hmm. going to the dialysis and go yeah. home and just live a normal life so i'm trying to keep the hope up for most of all uh, dialysis patients i like that <clears throat> it's beautiful too yeah, yeah. so the movements of it they're holding the sticks they have oh, two yeah. bustles they're just some of them can do like backflips and stuff I know. I was saying earlier, I was like, it's a really good workout. Yeah, I, and we really highly encourage people to do more research and like look into yeah. it. Um, so uh, this YouTube fancy dancers. Yeah, you'll see yeah. a ton. Yeah. <laughs> um, so there are Go down women, a, women a fancy as well, as well. And there right. are uh, men fancy. So um, with uh, the ribbon skirt that he gets, he's probably doing both. But, uh, win. <laughs> but uh, the the bustle, what he's saying is, uh, it's uh, he has two bustles. They go on your back. So uh, what people don't know what uh, bustles are, they're they're made up of uh, feathers. Some of them are like eagle feathers. Some of them make them out of a hawk. Yeah. Other ones made uh, make out of uh, um, diff- I mean, uh, uh, prairie chickens. Uh, yeah, yeah. Just depends on uh, your style, uh, how mm-hmm. how you wanna how you wanna do that. Um, they do take a, a long time to, to make. Oh, I started my own bustle back in BC and man, that, that like, I must've put in like 
about 30 hours, but I only just did the colors and the beadwork and I didn't even put it all together yet. And I'm just like, oh, and then I started uh, speaking about my uh, my story and I just ended up receiving my bustles not too long, <laughs> like last year. And I'm just like, wow, right on. <laughs> you're like, all right. <laughs> right on. <laughs> now I just think, need this. Yeah. <laughs> you think you're going to finish that, uh, what you started there? Oh, your, definitely. Uh, yeah. yeah. At least you like That's... have one to use while you're working on it. Yeah. What's that? Oh, sorry. I said, it. at least you have one to use like while you're working on it. Yeah. 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 Um, did they, uh, so the, the drawing that you did, uh, was it like, a? uh, did they have them pre-made or was it made to your specifications? Uh, no, it was pre-made. Yeah. So, uh, they, 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 they had it, they, they, they were dancing dudes before they gave it to me. So cool. Cool. But uh, it just worked out. And I, like, like the colors that I chose for my outfit, it was the colors on that bus were the same colors that I picked for my. Whoa. Uh, that's what I was going to ask too. The color, <laughs> the color scheme. Uh, and uh, what else? Uh, <clears throat> it came with uh, beadwork, and uh, <clears throat> the beadwork was exactly the same as my colors for my outfit as, as well. Wow, that's that's yeah. beautiful. That's really. There's so many stuff things right there. in in your story and like in your life. That sounds happen. like when yeah, that are like happening <clears throat> so syn synchronously, <laughs> synchronously. <laughs> 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 you know what yeah. I mean? <laughs> um, so what about you, Mike? Uh, how do you stay connected to your culture? Uh, what does it mean to you to be Cree? Um, same thing as Alex. You know, I wasn't really taught about my culture at all throughout my whole life. I grew up in and out of foster care as a kid. So mm -hmm. some of the exposure I got was basically just a book, you know, with little colored little native people on it. <laughs> teepees and you know that kind yeah. of stuff and yeah. they're really um like how do you say that where it's like the media or whatever like movies and stuff portray us what's yeah. that word um like stereotyping yeah the stereotype stereotypical, stereotypical yeah. indigenous person right okay yeah, yeah so peter pan you know stuff like that yeah. was all i was really exposed to up until i was like 10 years old uh the first time i ever entered a sweat lodge was when i was in jail when i was 12 years old and that's the first time I experienced, you know, smoking a pipe, going to a sweat, like sitting down with an elder and, and hearing those kinds of teachings. So I wasn't ready for it at that time. You were Something. in jail. Oh, sorry. Go ahead. I didn't mean to cut you off. I wasn't I wasn't ready for it at that time to learn about my culture. Uh -huh. But further on down the road in life, you know, I became a sun dancer, which is basically a way of offering the only thing you can really offer creator is your time you know your body your mm -hmm. your love your attention all of those things so i became a sun dancer and i can't really speak too much about it i feel like okay, my yeah, teachings like were taught to not say it too much but mm -hmm. when when you're there and you partake in, in a sun dance you'll understand the sacrifices you're making and what it's for yeah so that's the route that i chose to go for was the the spiritual side because i've been on both sides you know where I went to church and I also went to a sweat lodge. So I just felt like I connected more inside that lodge. So same way it's going to the same person. You're just praying different ways. There's no right or wrong. So <clears throat> okay. what else? What um, else is me intact with my culture? Oh. You know, just ceremonies, there's round dances, there's feasts, yeah. there's powwows, like Alex is saying, there's, there's so many different types of gatherings we have. And I feel like those are good ways to, you know, stay connected to that culture. But one of the best things you could probably do and you don't need numerous people around is just, you know, praying. Right. Light up some smudge, you yeah. know, yeah. smudge for your thoughts and just yeah. let that pain go for the day. Ask for, for helpers to come guide your way and, you know, pray that, that that day goes good. Yeah. Pray for the people in your life and everything. Life. Pray for everyone and everything. Yeah. Yeah. Even the people who don't see eye to eye with you, you know, pray for those people too. Yeah, like, yeah, like pray for you guys to be able to see eye to eye and stuff. Um, that's, yeah, that's um, really good. <laughs> so when you, you got int uh, int introduced to, I can't talk today, 
<laughs> introduced to the sweat lodge when you were you said when you were in jail right yeah how did you uh like get introduced like who introduced you and like um it was just offered in there i was in oh, okay. a place called nbyc it's a north Battleford youth center it's okay. um it's pretty maximum security for youth okay so they had that sweat lodge there and the elder comes in once a week every sunday you'd have a sweat from three to four quiet hour four to five you know so I just yeah. got into that schedule and they asked me that one that one day who wants to go to the sweat and I was like I'll go like, check I it guess out. I'll go yeah <laughs> there's this uh really like you know strong guy in our in our our unit he's uh -huh. like he's just always talking all manly and like tough and not scared of anything and we get into the sweat lodge and you know you expect that person to be the strong because it can get really hot in there sometimes mm -hmm. depending on who's hosting the the sweat yeah. they continuously pour the water you know <laughs> if, if your mind isn't strong it doesn't matter how your body is because if you right. can't focus on your prayers and your thoughts then you're gonna freak out so the the big strong guy is like let me out let me out oh, you know no. he's like halfway through the first round he's freaking out and me the littlest guy in the unit you're like sitting just chilling just all praying and humble like <laughs> yoga. not even sweating <laughs> you're like <laughs> <laughs> not even sweating there's like a, a bubble around you <laughs> coming you're like little yoda <laughs> you're like hating <laughs> <laughs> just kidding yeah. oh that's really cool i mean that you were able to like your first time you know were able to stay so strong and just stay humble like you said and pray through it i haven't been in one yet I'm, i want to I'm also kind of scared. I'm gonna just just a uh, word of advice I would say is to just be cautious of who you trust to to pass those teachings down to you. And as a first timer, okay. you know, just take somebody with you that you trust because there's a lot of elders out there that that aren't healthy okay. and they they take advantage of certain people. So just be cautious of that because there's some people who have who have done harmful things, more harmful okay. things than helpful things yeah okay. That's so when you enough. do go for your first time i want it to be a beautiful experience right. and i just want it to be with somebody who you can continue to heal with down your journey okay that's good to know mm -hmm. good to know wise words really good yeah words right there. yeah um because all all that uh ceremony is sacred and you want to uh do those be going through it like the right way yeah you want to yeah. uh have be in the right mindset you want to yeah. uh ask questions along the way and you want to uh talk to people that uh have those answers and you don't want to um ever pay for anything like that there there are people who are like no you have to pay me to, mm. to do these ceremonies and yeah uh, mm. those people aren't the people that you should no. be going to uh do this for or do this with um no, for your uh, non-indigenous people sorry just for your non-indigenous people and people who haven't attended sweats there's a protocol to follow Mm -hmm. and it's different for every elder but for the most part you know it's like tobacco mm -hmm. you know if they're coming a long way to meet you you know help with awesome. the gas or whatever you can it's not to say like here's a check and right yeah they'll, you'll know the difference between an elder who's like i need this amount and whatever but mm -hmm. just do your best to help and yeah yeah there are people that say uh they're like it's whatever you think yeah. this is worth to you yeah so if you think that it's like a hundred bucks, then give them a hundred bucks. But if you, if it's like blankets or like or kind of what you can or provide tobacco or something or it's too, what, yeah. it's whatever you think uh, the ceremony or uh, whatever you're asking for is worth, that's what you give to them. Because sometimes they're they're like uh, it's whatever you provide, and uh, so yeah, that's that's uh, just that's, having like thank good you for uh, yeah, mentioning you. that stuff. Yeah, because um, yeah. there, there are probably so some people listening that might wanna. Yeah, there. Are, it's also right. for like the questions and stuff that you have to ask too. You know, say if you wanted to get your name, you know, you're gifted your name. Mm -hmm. You got to take your cloth. You know, you got to have your four colors, your grandmother cloth, your tobacco, and you gotta you gotta ask that elder, mm -hmm. and make sure that they know ahead of time. You know, saying like I'm preparing to you know get my name, and that gives them time to get prepared for it too. Because mm -hmm. other things that you can ask too, you know, healing. Say if he went to a sweat. Be like, you know, he'd offer his cloth and say, you know, I'm, I have dialysis and I want to have kidney failure and I go dialysis. I want to pray for the people that have the same thing I'm going through for healing. You okay. know, that's where those every round. I don't know if you guys know too much about sweat lodges. I think he I knows think some. He knows more. 
Yeah. I mean, um, I, I, I mean been, he definitely knows more. Than I've been going to you, you sweat are, and yeah. uh, Sundance and all the mm-hmm. all those uh, ceremonies since I was a little guy. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So there's – it's just something you have to experience yourself. I don't really like speaking yeah. too much about it yeah. online. Yeah. Yeah, but yeah, I get that. when you go, you'll mm-hmm. love it. Yeah. Cool. Uh, we were gifted the, uh, our, our tribe was gifted the, uh, sun, not the Sundance, the, uh, sweat lodge from, uh, the, I believe the Sioux, they were the ones that, uh, gifted it to us. Oh, like gave you the knowledge of it? Yeah. So we weren't, uh, we didn't really originally it. have it, uh, um, might be different for those guys up there. I don't know. We're cousins <laughs> though. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, but, uh, so yeah, thanks for, um, sharing all that uh we don't really have to uh dig too deep into yeah because like you said it you don't want to be sharing too yeah. much about that kind of stuff on here but uh if you want to know more uh ask the questions and uh, do it in a respectful way right, right. as the yeah. lesson from this uh what you're getting yeah out there. find find an elder you trust and and mm-hmm. offer that protocol and begin your journey mm-hmm. yeah yeah you'll um, learn your stripes along the way Yes, mm-hmm. <laughs> I've, I've learned the hard way a few times here and there. I remember uh, one year, that first year, when I spoke about going to speak for the first time. Yeah. Um, and I went to that conference in Ottawa. Mm-hmm. So it was, it was like Halloween time, I'm pretty sure. And I had this like war paint on my face. Mm-hmm. This is like seven years ago. And I'm wearing my war paint. I went and bought a little uh, bow and arrow with like the little sticky ones on the wall, <laughs> you know, and my little braids are down <laughs> and I posted the picture and this one elder got really mad at me yeah. he said did you earn that paint did you earn that right to oh. wear that paint and I said what do you mean it's like did you earn the right to wear that paint on your face I said I don't think so like, wash <laughs> it off <laughs> wash out all this stuff on my face I didn't learn that right until last year last okay summer. so there's different things you have to do to kind of you know level your way up okay how do, uh I don't know if you can talk about it but if you can, how did you earn that? Um, being a yeah. scout. Okay. At the at the ceremony. Okay. Just, just helping with that. Okay. Cool. There's different ways you can earn your earn your war paint or earn your okay. feathers, basically. Yeah, that's um that's a, a really good thing to bring up though, like um, like just making sure you're doing things respectfully and. Yeah, it's, it's, uh, your, sometimes it cultural really appropriation. Day. It can yeah. even happen within your own your own culture. Yeah, like definitely like, any non-indigenous people don't do it. <laughs> like some people so, will wear a headdress for Halloween, and, you know, they'll go parade around oh, with a yeah. native outfit. I'm native, and I won't even yeah, put on right. a headdress because yeah. it's not because yeah. I understand what it represents and, mm-hmm. and to be how it's to be respected. You know, right, right. Mm-hmm. So how do you navigate through uh, this colonized, you know, world that we live in mm. with your, you know, traditions and, sorry, uh, culture in mind um, in order to, like, succeed in your job or in your, if that makes sense? Um, sorry, that's kind of a there's a lot question. of, uh, we all stay connected in one, like, in, we find a way. There's all, like, an Indians, and the Indians are never stuck, so. right. The That's way right. I stay connected totally. with everybody else is that I've, through um, um, Zoom, Facebook, and all that stuff. The media, of course, um, which is bad, I would say. Like, <laughs> but uh, that's the only way I've been staying connected with everybody else. They have groups like uh, power groups and uh, uh, all these other short, like smaller groups and stuff like that. And I try and stay connected with them and with my business and stuff like that and um, try and support one another because I'm just like everybody else trying to reach out for help, eh? And mm-hmm. <clears throat> can't really do it with uh, the pandemic. You can't just go walk around and, you know, hug somebody and, hey, I need help. And, uh, yeah. So i've just been staying connected with uh you know facebook and reaching out to other people as yourself and <clears throat> just uh yeah that's the way i've been doing it and nice. it's been helping quite a bit and you know and yeah social media has been such a gr- great tool in our just in our modern lives but um 
but also just spe- especially during the pandemic to be able to still connect with people like imagine if we didn't have all these social media tools or like zoom and stuff to be able to connect with people while we're trying to stay quarantined that'd be crazy if we didn't have that i mean it'd just be way different and then it, i know like you know it's probably a good tool to be able to connect with people and like get reconnected to your culture you know like you when you got connected to your culture and everything like you connected through social media so yeah that makes sense that's cool i totally forgot the question um (laughs) that's okay (laughs) um so like how do you navigate through you know like our modern like colonized world you know with your while like keeping in in intact with your culture you know in order to like succeed in your job okay i think it would be way different if i wasn't born in in this this time frame you know considering the elders you know who have been here another 50 years before us Mm -hmm. imagine the way that they think about the world because they've seen so much transformation within the last hundred years right Mm -hmm. so they probably think about things differently but for me I, i grew up in the middle right before you know technology was was even here Mm -hmm. and then to the point where technology is at today I'm kind of in that age group of where I got to experience both parts of it so I get to stay connected in the sense that I know you know this conversation is happening 30 years ago yeah Mm -hmm. it would just be me and Alex having this conversation yeah but the way that I navigate through it today is you know I I use it to my advantage because I can reach way more people now Mm -hmm. instead of having an actual group of 200,000 people standing in front of me, I can just go and post something on social media and it'll yeah. reach the same amount, you know, whoever choose to see it. Or more. Like yeah, or more. Mm-hmm. Yeah, So sure. technology, what did, um, what did Edison say? Or not Edison, uh, what did, he's a genius. You know who I'm talking um, about? Einstein or? Einstein, Einstein. Yeah, Einstein. Einstein. What did okay. Einstein say? I'm pretty sure it was him, but he said, you know, like... E equals MC squared. One, <laughs> yeah, that's it. He said that. But he said one day our, our technology is going to surpass our humanity. You know, and I, oh, I feel yeah. like we're getting mm-hmm. to that point where we're mm-hmm. so focused on our phones and we're not we're not having those interactions that we used to. Yeah. And that's an important thing because as humans, we're, we're very... Um, we need it. That meaningful We need interaction. that interaction yeah. with one another to... Otherwise, we become little robots, you know? zombies eventually less than robots because they're going to be smarter than us like you said <laughs> like like, they're like my children are very small <laughs> like three four years old and they know how to work like an iphone without mm-hmm. any help yeah that's crazy you give that to an elder they're gonna be like what the hell or do even I, me how do I do this? Yeah. <laughs> you know so our technology is evolving past that point of humanity and i feel like it's a good and bad thing there's mm-hmm. pros and cons to it <clears throat> but I use it to navigate through life, to help promote my business, what I'm doing, evolve and grow, and just continuously do that, diversify. Yeah. Like, use it in the best way you can, not it just... It can be used for negativity. Yeah, like, yeah, like, use it. Yeah, exactly. And a lot of people do that, you know, there's there's a lot of negative Nancys, mm-hmm. and that's where the unhealthy people come into play, because they, they project their own feelings, thoughts, emotions... Mm-hmm onto the next person because it mm-hmm. takes away from what they're going through mm-hmm. right? and then the other people see that and then it makes them feel negative and just goes on this whole chain of so it's a trickle effect and it goes yeah. beyond just throwing that rock in the water right because if, if you ever thrown a rock in the water and the ripple effect of it it goes just beyond that though because like that rock doesn't stop there it hits the bottom of the True. ground it knocks up that sand it creates all that dust those fishes get affected wow. everybody's affected not just what you see on the surface it goes below that i love that metaphor because mm-hmm. not just yeah not just the ripples like yeah everyone focuses on that the surface level of uh chain or you know effects that actions have yeah so everything is connected things are way different now than they were 500 years ago you know like if i was to be a public speaker back then it would take me two years to go back and forth across the country on a <laughs> yeah. horseback, you know, or a wagon or whatever they, yeah, whatever you were. I can fly now, you know, the world's yeah. evolving and growing, but soon we'll be able to teleport. You'll be able to That'd go be pretty like cool. five different yeah. places in one day. It's a Goku instant transmission. <laughs> oh, sorry. I was like, he gets mad when I make too much noise. <laughs> the editing. 
See what I was saying? Flaring her hands around. <laughs> Flaring. <laughs> Flailing. 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 That's the I word. I can't Flailing. control these Flailing. lips. <laughs> they, they do what they want. <laughs> I, have a, I have a question about your blanket behind you. Yeah. Hmm. Whose blanket is that? It's eighth generation. Eighth generation? That's our, um. well, I, won't, I was going to say that's the episode that we're releasing today. Yeah, we mm-hmm. it, it just uh, actually just, just released. Oh, just as we were. Did talking. you get okay? As we were talking, so yeah. you can simultaneously watch it while we're talking. So, is there is there teachings behind that blanket? Because it looks a lot similar to like the BC art over here. So, uh, it's the Confluence blanket. Uh, I don't really. There's a um. If you go onto their website, I don't remember the bi- og- the bio on it or like the description, but um. The, the artist information, do we have it in there? The artist information and, like, the um, story behind it, like, why what inspired him um, was on there. Is but it's it? from, like, B.C. area? Um, like the, I think he's from, let's see. The West Coast? So, um, David Boxley is the artist. Um, he is from uh, Metlakla, Alaska. So, it's, um, but, like, still kind of, I know they have similar... There's like the Haida art down in BC, yeah. right? and then, or I think no, that's actually uh, isn't it? Um, yeah, it's a uh, Salish. Oh, Salish. Oh, Salish. Haida. The Haida art is Haida. Oh wait, they're, they're yeah. Haida. Okay, <laughs> not, not right. Salish. They're different. <laughs> yeah, there's so uh, many different me. tribes. <laughs> oh yeah, BC. Uh, I'm thinking um, of Seattle area or like yeah. it's like right Washington. above. Yeah, but yeah, like basically, uh, yeah, like I guess kind of the same area. That. Just a border in between, but yeah. Um, Disregard us, we're uh, stupid not. Americans. We don't know. <laughs> <laughs> you guys have seven. Oh, I provinces. guess he doesn't yeah. have the description. No, <laughs> eight. You know what I don't get? What I, I don't know how. Oh, yeah, why do they Haida, teach us? They teach us about the United States in school, and they don't teach like the United States about Canada at all. Like I know <laughs> we're like eh, Canada. We don't even like you guys. We're like your weird little brother. You don't like, I don't know anything. I was like, ask. Yeah. I was asking some girl, uh, some girl, this, um, girl that, uh, acquaintance, I guess that uh, she was talking about being in Canada. And I was like, what is it like over there? Like, <laughs> like what does it look like? <laughs> like, I just have no idea what it's <laughs> like at all. Like, I it's don't a know. frozen wasteland. <laughs> All you guys know is more polite. That's it. Yeah, yeah right. <laughs> say sorry too much. We only know yeah. like all the stereotypes. We do say a a lot. Or e. I heard that D. the can- the cities are cleaner. <laughs> so I mean, we'll, we'll uh, get back to. So this is our uh, our last question, uh, which is just, uh, what do you wish to let our audience know about uh, your tribe, nation? Or like any last words you Last have. words. Final pretty thoughts, much, I mean. Pretty much anything you want to uh, leave our audience with. Um, <clears throat> well, I would like to say <clears throat> for the generation out there, um, there's this uh, saying that was uh, I, I heard today or yesterday, and uh, it made a lot of sense. And uh, it kind of like, meant a lot to me eh? and um it's uh you know how the river flows and it never goes backwards uh-huh. it's because the river left the past behind Ooh. and is moving forward with you know to new beginning and new uh, obstacles yeah for the generation that's the way that they should think is like a river flow like the river leave the past behind okay. and move forward to uh, different obstacles and you know just Keep moving forward. Keep moving forward. Yeah. Yeah. Agamemnon. Don't get stuck in the yeah. past. Or in like, don't get don't stuck in the past. That. Yeah. Yeah. I like that. I like that. I love yeah. that. Or else Bruce Lee said, be like Wata. <laughs> <laughs> there you go. Be like Wata, my <laughs> friend. <laughs> <clears throat> that kind of reminds me of, uh, you guys know Theron Flurry? He was a hockey player. You know, Theo? Mm, I... um, Flurry? Yeah, for sure. Theron Flurry. Yeah, I used yeah. to play for like different NHL teams. Okay. So I don't know uh, of anyone in hockey. He's actually a public speaker now too. So oh. he travels and does speakings. And I went and listened to him a few years back. And he uses the symbol of a frog. So he has a frog with an orange shirt. Okay. And he speaks about, he's like, have you guys ever seen a frog jump backwards? And people oh. are like, no, I've never actually seen it. It's like, 
He's like, because yeah, frogs yeah. don't look back. He's like, they continuously move forward in life. They never jump backwards. So that's what we got to continuously do is, you know, what Alex is saying is yeah. Agamegmo, keep moving forward. Um, some final thoughts I'd like to say is, you know, just get to know where you come from and figure mm -hmm. out who you are. Because we all come from somewhere, like you mm -hmm. said, you know, we're all indigenous to some place on this planet. Mm -hmm. So, so learn where you come from and mm -hmm. learn that history because if you don't know who you are, you're not going to be able to, to go through life fully understanding what it was that you're, you're meant here to do. Mm -hmm. You're going to be lost. So get your name, you know, whatever your culture is, whatever you believe in. But for me, being a, a Plains Cree man, I needed to know my name. And that's the beginning of my journey because now I can figure out where I need to go by understanding yeah. who I am. And don't get too far ahead of yourself because it's a learning process. You know, <clears throat> people live to be hopefully 100 years old and there's a lot of life to live from now till then. Learn from your mistakes, grow, build, love, respect everything around you and do your best. One of the things that people do is they try to be better than other people they compare themselves mm -hmm. so stop comparing yourself to other people just be better than who you were yesterday that's yeah. it yeah that's all you got to do i love those final thoughts uh from both of you guys thank you guys so much for being on uh our podcast yeah thank you yeah thank yes. you for having us a smudge yes. for your thoughts go yeah. check it out today yeah. oh that's what i wanted to touch on that's why i asked oh. you about the I totally forgot. Oh, yeah, yeah. Touch on your <laughs> yeah, blanket. Yeah, yeah, I love it, so, by the way. You probably know about star blankets, right? Uh, I, s I actually, very, I learned a long time ago, but I actually, like, forgot. Uh, very little. Yeah. So little. within our, our culture, there's so many different teachings, right? Like, mm -hmm. through the teepee. You guys know what a teepee is, right? Mm -hmm. Well, for your viewers who don't know, there's, there's poles. Usually it's, like, 15, 16 poles, depending on who's putting it up. But each pole represents something. One's, like, life, oh, yeah, like so. love, respect, honor, humility, trust. All of those good things. And they teach you as you're putting it up. They have those teachings with it. Same with the sweat lodge. They use the... The, the pole. Sticks. <laughs> Not poles, but they're, like, sticks. They're, like, oh. that are intertwined that create that, right? And that's okay. how... Like you have to go and learn these teachings for yourself. I'm just giving you like a brief description. Mm -hmm. Same thing with the, the quilt. Like we have, depending on the pattern, this is a, what is this? Six star? Yeah. Seven. There's different types of quilts people use, but there's a lesson behind this as it's made. Mm -hmm. So if you go and find it's the not, right elder, yeah. get the offering, but there's like, there's, this is a high honor to get these types of things when they're gifted to you okay so say you got a feather you know someone gave you an eagle someone gave you a blanket you know those kinds of things are, are really way up there There's a... medallion you know learn where you come from right everything has a teaching yeah it does yeah yeah even uh our writings have uh songs and teachings behind them mm -hmm. and all... that's why when people sorry but... oh i was just gonna say like touch on or add to that like that's why when people like for the non-Indigenous people or Indigenous people that um, may be appropriating certain parts of their culture. But like that's why people get, a, you know, tell you not to appropriate when you are just using a symbol or like just a piece of a culture. Like you're not representing what it really means. Like it has a story and it has a lesson and a teaching. And it's just like disrespectful to be wearing a headdress or just like, you know, throwing around a star blanket or something if you don't know what it means so anyway that's good to to point out too and also for your viewers and listeners you know if you do see that happening you know use your voice you were given it yeah so do it in the most respectful way i'm like hey, take that dress yeah. off your head. you know like yeah. <laughs> just state your opinion and speak how you feel about it because even if they don't take it off right then they're going to think twice before mm -hmm. they put it on again mm -hmm. yeah. Oh, same thing with like people selling smudge, selling sage yeah. or sweetgrass, things like that. You know, be vocal. Is it? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Speak up. Mm -hmm. Use that voice. Use it. Well, oh. All right. <laughs> You're gonna say something. No. All right. Well, uh, thank you guys again. Yeah. Thank you so much. Awesome, you guys. Thank you. Yeah. Yes. Yeah, thank you. All right. See you guys. Yeah. See you later. See you, Corey. All right. Thanks for listening. 
I uh, hope you had fun. Uh, this was a pretty good episode. Uh, we had a lot of jokes. I really like this uh, episode, so I hope you... Yeah, we like these people. Yeah, so I, <laughs> I hope you had fun. Uh, we did. We sure did. Anyways, Sorry. if you want to know more about us, if you want to uh, listen to more episodes, check out our website at www.asmudgeforyourthoughts.com. Uh, from there, you could find us and like us on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, uh, whatever. What is that other one? TikTok. Pretty much Twitter. all those. You mean a Twitter for no, us? Yeah, it said TikTok, Twitter, and okay, whatever. You could like us on all the platforms all that we have. There. There's links to them. Uh, you could also, uh, if you want to be on uh, our podcast, or you know somebody who would be a good fit for the podcast, uh, shoot us an email at contact at a smudge for your thoughts.com or fill out our simple form, which could be found on our website. Uh, it's labeled simple form. On there, so <laughs> it's pretty, yeah. So it's pretty good. Um, and we'd like to give a, a shout out and thank you uh, to Mary Kay for designing Hello. our logo. And uh, I guess this is a shout out part, uh, but we'd like to shout out eighth generation for our uh, backdrop. Now, they did not provide this to us. We just really love what they stand for. They are inspired natives, not native inspired. Um, and thank you, Okimau Kihu, the late Roddy Sunchild Sr., for the words in our intro song. So, yeah. All right. You, you really took it all away, but yeah. that's good. <laughs> I didn't feel like talking anyway. <laughs> I was kidding. With that, Dovachenya. Gigawapenman. See you later. See you later. Okay. Peace. I don't know. I did that. Kiss, kiss our smudgers. Oh my god, our fans can be called smudgers. Smudges. 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 <laughs>